back to Art 371. Um, today we're going to dive into TOPs, these texture operators inside of Touch Designer. Um, just a great kind of beginner's way in Touch Designer to get used to making some unique kind of image filtering. Uh, as you can see here, I have quite a string of them going on. I'm actually using my live webcam. You can see me right now. If I zoom in, there I am talking to you on my webcam. And at the very end of it, I've got this crazy composite with a, some text and this crazy kind of mirrored um, composite side of what I'm doing. So anyway, how did I get from A to B? Well, let's take a look and see. Um, as I said, this is just going to be a little experimentation lesson today on getting to, to know the TOPs, the, the texture operators. So first things first, uh, I added what's known as a video in just to give me a source. I could do a movie in, but I wanted you guys to know you could always use your webcam. So if you go to TOP, hit tab on your keyboard um, and bring up the TOP option here. There's the texture operators. You'll see right down here, that's the movie file in we've been looking at this whole time. But you can also find a video device in. So that's what I have here. This is a video device. Once I brought it in, I can choose webcams. I actually have, if I move that over, I have two different webcams. So I could choose my FaceTime HD cam, which is a little bit different um, than if I go back to my Logitech webcam. Oh, wrong one. That was Logitech Capture. There we go. HD Pro Cam. Cool. Um, and I can make that off. Now I'm just like paused or back on and I'm active again. Um, you know, there's some things you can do here with it, but overall, it's a pretty simple system. You can play around, I believe, here. Um, I'm not sure. I can't get those controls. Maybe with this particular camera, I can't quite control all of that. Um, but does allow me to bring a webcam in. I am getting a warning right here that the maximum resolution is 1280 by 1280. My webcam is actually a 1080p, so that's why I'm getting it. So it's just scaling it down to that 1280 size. The source is originally 1920 by 1080. Aside from that, I have kind of the standard video movie file input that comes in your anytime you open up with a little banana here. This will work well for us because it's a PNG with an alpha channel. Um, so. I don't think there's any other PNGs that I can work with in here. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot on my computer right now, so we'll stick with that. Oh, actually, there was one there for a second. Where is he? Smiley. Let's see what Smiley looks like. Oh, that's cool. I think the banana was a little bit better. So I'm going to go back and grab Mr. Actually, if I just undo, we'll get the banana back in there. And then I haven't turned it on yet, but I'm going to show you guys what a ramp object is here in a little bit. And I do have a noise object. So if I go to, let's look at noise first. So here it is. If we go in and find it, noise. And uh, noise just generates kind of um, a still 2D image of noise at whatever type. There's a, a list here. So there's like alligator noise. Um, and let me bring up one of these so we can see it a little bit better. Let me bring up, let's bring up that amplitude so we can see it a little bit more. So each one of these has a different kind of like random generated noise. That's more like a white noise, the random one, Harman harmonic summation. You can see how that's being, right now these are all being fed into this composition. Uh, ob TOP, which actually allows me to composite multiples together. We'll look at that in a minute. But the noise came in here because I can play around with all these different types. There's Hermite noise, there's sparse noise, random GPU noise again. Just kind of fun to try uh, bringing some of these in. And then like I said, if I take the amplitude down, it's almost, um, it's almost like an opacity of it. You know, it's like bringing out the contrast or not on it. If I bring that back down, it's barely there. So you can kind of play with that a little bit. You can also play with the offset of it, like making it darker or whiter and playing with the, that kind of contrast in the noise. As you can see how it's affecting the rest of my image. And then there's all sorts of like just parts of the noise calculation, the harmonic spread, the actual harmonics of it, uh, the period of the noise. This is kind of like the scale of the noise, like... How tiny do you want it to be, or do we want to like zoom way in on the noise? And then there's the random seed of the noise, which does kind of change it, slightly shifting it, right? 
down the road, you'll be able to learn how to kind of like animate things like this and, and change them on sliders and things like that. Um, but right now, I just wanted you to know about the noise objects. It's kind of a, a fun way to do it. If I want to bypass it and just turn it off, I can always just hit this little arrow on the noise box there and bypass it. That's what I did for the ramp here. If I turn this ramp object on, which again is tab, TOP, and then come over here and find ramp. There it is right down at the bottom. It's kind of a, a ramp can be thought of as a, a gradient, but you know, right now I'm going to go ahead and turn it on, activate it. And you'll see I have that blended in here. I'm using the black and white data of that gradient. And the, I have a horizontal ramp. I have a radial ramp. I have a circular ramp. And you can see how that's being kind of like multiplied into my image right now, right? Um, so I can do a lot of different things with the ramp and you can play around and add different colors in and play around with the spectrum of that ramp and the value of it and how bright it is or how dark it is. And you can see how that's affecting my overall. Each time I do that, I'm kind of adding another ring to the ramp there, which is cool. Um, just kind of playing around with it a little bit here. You have different red, green, or blue, or if you want to go with hue or saturation or val val uh, value on the ramp, you can bring up, there we go. I had to bring up the brightness, the value there to br actually bring some color into my ramp. And now you're seeing some different like spectrums of color there that are coming in. So I could really bring in any values that I want. It doesn't have to be just black and white. And you can see how I'm getting some like pretty cool color effects that are being layered into my ramp. Um, again, if I want to act, deactivate that, I can bypass it and turn that back off again. Um, but sometimes fun to bring in a gradient of color or multiple gradients of color uh, in different ways. Whoop, didn't mean to do that. Let me see if I can, there we go. I think I can just drag those out. I'm clicking and just kind of dragging it out of there to get rid of some of these extra colors in the ramp. These little boxes up here are little ones that like, if you just click, you add another kind of point in the ramp. Um, so there we go, I'm bringing that back up. I can shift these colors all around and you can see how it's affecting that uh, composite that I have that it goes into next. So I dragged each of these outputs into the composite. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the, the ramp for right now. Let's go ahead and bypass that. Right now, the only thing that are going into it is the video in and then this banana, right? And when they're coming into the composite right now, I'm gonna zoom in on it just so you can kind of see what's going on. Since this has no background, the only thing affecting this composite is the banana itself. And you'll see the, the main area you wanna work with. You can see everything that I have coming in right now. I have the ramp, I have the video in, I've got the movie file in which is the banana, and then I have the noise. And I can remove any of those by hitting X, and that'll kind of break that connection. Uh, but if I come into here, I can choose different types of operations. These are like layer effects in Photoshop uh, that are going on. So I can do add and add that layer in. Uh, I can go to average, which kind of like averages the two out. I can go to brightest, color burn, blur linear, you know, it goes on and on. There's a lot of different options in here. Actually, I think there's more than there are in Photoshop. Divide, uh, freeze didn't do anything on that particular combo. Glow, which makes it super bright. Hard mix, that's kind of fun. You can still see me through that mix pretty well and still animated. Um, hue, which is very, very mellow. So each of these does kind of a different thing and uh, I'll have a link under this lesson to kind of walk you through all the different ways that the composite kind of works. You can subtract one from the other. So many different options here that you can play with. So that's what's going on when I have these other ones over here. If I turn these back on again, that's what's happening. So oh, that's kind of a fun effect with the uh, ramp gradient there and that particular setting, which was the vivid light. And if I turn this one back on, then you get the noise inside of that channel as well, right? So you can combine really as many as you want. I don't think there's a limit on how many composited objects can be brought in, right? I'm gonna bypass the noise on that one again. So that's kind of fun. Um, beyond that point, I have the composition here going into a transform TOP. So again, TOP, 
and then you'll find transform right here and then this is just kind of a fun way to be able to uh, oh, I'm just checking my clock anyway I can come into here and I can rotate that layer any way that I want so if I want to like tilt it if I want to scale it I can type in like 1.2 and stretch it on the X I can make it even 1.2 on the Y as well. So if I want to zoom in on an area like that, um, I can even move it in slight amounts. So uh, don't go too far, but like 0.1 is going to move it over to the right a little bit. 0.1 on the Y is going to move it up a little bit. Um, now, obviously, I'm running off the edge as well. So you just got to watch, you know, I zoomed into it. So that gave me enough to work with. Uh, I wish they were all sliders. I, I get why rotate was, but the other ones would be convenient as well. We could run sliders in in the future into each of these um, to control those, and we'll get to that as we start building some interfaces in future lessons. Um, so lots of different ways that we can work here. Uh, we can work on pixels or fractions, uh, etc. Let me see what the pivot. I haven't done the p pivot yet. Okay, so that's another way to kind of like pivot and move. So. You can do rotate, translate, scale, scale, translate, rotate. You can do all sorts of different combinations there and, and see what works best for you. Um, but again, simple way to just transform uh, any layer. I have it coming out of my comp, but it could be applied before any of those came into the comp, and you could transform each of those layers as well. All right, from there, I used what's called an overlay. An overlay allows you to just kind of like lay one object on top of another. Um, so for this particular setup, um, I don't think, I think, yeah, that's not going to do that. Um, for this particular one, I brought in a text object overlay on top of my transform object. So again, overlay is right up here under TOP. You have over, I'm sorry, it was an over, not an overlay, but one over the other. Uh, so there's my over that I brought in. And then under text, again, T-O-P, there's the text. And on text, I can bring in pretty much, I can write anything I want under the text here. So I put in howdy, but I could put in T-O-P rules. I could have anything I want in there. Um, let's just put in um, mapping. There we go. And you'll kind of see how this works out. So I can put in any text that I want. And then I can come to font and I can choose different fonts on my computer. Obviously, it doesn't have to be um, the original font that comes in there by default. Any fonts that I have loaded right now, it can load in. Let's try. Oh, no, not Chalk Duster. That's awful. Let's do. I'm trying to find a fun, styly one here. Let's go with. Well, these are pretty boring so far. Let's try stencil. Okay, cool. And obviously I can choose different colors as well, but under the font area, you can play around with a lot. I could bold it. I could, if there is a bold version of it, I can play with the font size, which is important. You need to know how to be able to like scale that up and down. Uh, you don't have to use a transform. You can just use font size on that. You can also play with line spacing. If you have multiple lines of text, uh, you can do your kind of horizontal alignment, centered or left or right adjustments on that. Uh, so there's some different like font attributes you have there. And then I can choose different colors as well. So if I pick here, I could go to like, you know, bright yellow or red, whatever color I want, purple. Let's go back with that like light blue. I think that popped, popped well. So close that window. Uh, you can do all sorts of different things in here, but for right now, I'm just going to leave it. And uh, yeah, so pretty simple, straightforward way to be able to bring some text into your scene. And then I said I used the over one to kind of map that into one channel and then the transform into the other. Beyond that, uh, you can add a blur object if you want to fuzz things out. Maybe something's looking pixelated or maybe you want particularly a blurry effect. So that's right up here under the TOPs, the blur. Whoop hit tab button one more too many times. So I don't really have it blurring much right now, but if I go ahead right now, I have Gaussian blur on, turned on, but I could blur that up a bit more. I could do the pre shrink and the filter size. That's also going to blur depending on how, um, you know, 
visible I want something to be or how blurry I want it to be. So these two kind of controls, the pre-shrink and the um, pre-shrink kind of, you know, it, it leaves it a bit more of a pixelized blur where the filter size actually gives the, the softness, that anti-aliasing to it. So I'm going to bring that back just a little bit. Blur it just a soft, a little soft touch to it, right? Okay. And like I said, there's different types of blur. There's cat mole, ROM, there's Gaussian blur. Let me just turn this up a bit so you can see maybe a little bit of the difference. There's box blur, Bartlett, Bartlett I should say, sync. That's kind of fun. Also kind of like blows it out while it's blurring. And Hanning, and last one, Blackman. I'm gonna go back to Gaussian and bring that down a little bit. Okay. From there, I brought in a mirror top. Uh, that's what we have here. So if I go to top, you'll see, where's mirror? Mirror's right here. Added the mirror in. And mirror's, you know, somewhat limited, but I can rotate my mirror. I can decide if I want it to be like a vertical mirror that's going on, which is kind of fun. Or do I want it to be a more of a horizontal mirror? or at a certain angle that the mirror is happening at. You know, the, you can't really read the mapping on it, but this one is like map PAM backwards there. I can turn off, um, I can also turn on a, a vertical mirroring or turn both of those off and just have it there. So now you can see me in the center there with my webcam coming in and out. Um, I can turn my X back on, turn my Y back off. Turn both of those off. Oh yeah, that's interesting. I th thought no matter what, I could turn the mirror on and off with a flip. Oh, you know, I'm sorry, that's just flipping. So flipping horizontally isn't gonna do anything in a horizontal mirror. Uh, let me see if it does anything in an angled mirror. Let's try that. Yeah, so there you can see the flip happening on the horizontal and there's the flip happening on the vertical. We just couldn't see it because it was fully horizontal at the time. So I'll keep it a little angle there. Um, let's see if I put it in a different pivot, 0.9. That's kind of fun. It offsets the flip a little bit. Let me see if I can see how that starts from out. A little offset of the center point of where that rotation is happening from. So instead of 0.9, let's do like 0.3. And then that's repeating it off into the distance. You can see the multiples. Let's turn, repeat, back to zero would be none in there. Hold just kind of like extends it outward like the pixels from the edge or mirror continues to mirror it outward. So you can get some interesting effects there depending on the scale of what's going on. So if I do that, if I come back to, maybe if I come back to transform here and let's scale these back down to like 0.7. Point seven. There we go. Now on this mirror, you can kind of see see how that extending does different things, right? So depending on what you're doing with the mirror as we rotate that around. So there's holding it, which gives the color flares off to the edge. Repeating, which repeats it or mirroring, which just continues to mirror it off. So let's bring that back around. And let's bring those pivot offsets back to 0.1 and 0.1. There we go. Cool. So lots to play with there. Um, depending on what you're trying to do, you can have a lot of fun with that and try some different stuff out. I'm going to take these back to zero. All right. And then last but not least, I'm going to go ahead and disable the mirroring for a second. Let's bypass that. And let's go ahead and bypass, I think maybe the I'm 
going to bypass this guy here just for clarity's sake for a second. The ramp. There we go. Now we can see a little bit better. I think back on my transform. Let's bring that back. There we go. And we'll bring the scale back up to one by one. There we go. That's getting there. And we'll take that pivot down to zero. All right, so now you can see, and let's turn the blur off just so that's a little bit more visible as well. There we go. So at the end here, I have what's called a, a text 3D kind of effect happening. You can see as I, I have this kind of tiled out into nine different segments going on and I have a slight delay between the segments. So again, this is called Text 3D. You can find it right here, Texture 3D. And I have my final output going into the Text 3D. I have it active here, have I selected. And this is where I can decide like how many tiles. Maybe I only want six tiles instead of nine. Maybe I only want three tiles. Maybe I want four tiles to give it just even in the space. And you can see there's a little delay that's happening there. And that's the step size. So if I turn that all the way back down, everything's kind of live, left hand, right hand, everything's moving in the normal way with all these overlays happening, right? Um, but if I bring that up a little bit, then I get kind of a delay from one to the other. So if I bring that up even more, then I get a real delay, boom, 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 boom. So kind of a fun little like Brady Bunch effect, tiling effect that you can get um, playing around. Um, and I can pulse it and have it kind of start over and uh, on and off. So there's a 3D attack and then a 2D effect as well. There's not a lot of difference between the 2D and 3D effect. Um, at least I haven't seen a lot of difference. I'm sure there's like a slight difference out there. But again, kind of a fun one. Um, I like to play around with like maybe like 12 on that. And then you can get a more like dramatic effect that's happening on the delay between all of them. Make these different motions happening. Kind of see as the delay happens between each one. So TOPs, the texture operators can be a lot of fun. There's a lot to play with in here. The last one I want to show you is a Photoshop in. Um, which is kind of fun as well. So I'm just going to show you this one separately, just since I have everything else already kind of running over there. I'm just going to bring in a, let's just bring in like a null object, a null sort of like an empty shell. You could run that null, null into Canton or anything at the end of the chain into Canton Mapper. But Photoshop in is really cool. You can actually take a live screen from Photoshop and feed it into Touch Designer. And the way that works is I have to bring up Photoshop real quick. And if you go to Photoshop and go down to Edit and go to Remote Connections, you have to enable this one called Remote Connections. Uh, and then you have to give it a password. Mine, I just called it Touch Designer. Uh, and I hit OK on that. And then as I start to work in Photoshop, uh, you have to click on this guy here and actually give it, uh, put the, te the, the password in. So mine was Touch Designer. And I have a warning, I think, because um, of the resolution again. Yeah, there we go. So now as I come in here, I'm in Photoshop. And I'll take a brush tool here. And you can start to see as I start doing different things inside of Photoshop, you can see the, the live result, and which is really, really fun. Um, so you can do a lot inside of Photoshop. Let's see if I can bring this over so you can see both at the same time, at least half the screen you'll be able to see. So I can come into Photoshop now and maybe grab like, there we go. Let's zoom in here and I'll grab my text tool. And there's that. I can scale this up real quick. It doesn't show it like fluidly happening, but it shows like the end results of operations. So after I move it, then it's like in a new place. So you can really have a lot of fun inside of Photoshop and go out there and find different imagery um, 
load it up and start to blend that into your composition as well. And so if you want to see like, you know, one place I could take all this, I could move these over. Let me get, go ahead and delete this connection. I don't really need the null. And I could um, bring this over here and add it into my composition, right? And now my Photoshop layer becomes all a part of that as well. Um, so just another way to bring another input source in. You've got a whole bunch of TOPs. Obviously, there's way more. I'm just touching, scratching the surface. So I'd love for you to just spend some time playing with all the different TOPs in here. I'm going to give you a link uh, under this today's lesson uh, for more TOPs to explore. This is just, like I said, scratching the surface with maybe a, an eighth or a sixth, sixth of them so far here that we've gone through. Um, there's so many more to play with, so many more to kind of... Um, build out your your live image composition tools and uh, see where it takes you and then bring all this into Cantan and start mapping it onto your objects. So have some fun with the TOPs and Touch Designer and thanks for tuning in.